Call to order the Board of County Commissioners Work Session for December 19, 2017. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance and the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the same symbol of perfect friendship among all the United States. Thank you very much. Okay, um, does anybody see any changes on the work session agenda, Madam Manager? No, sir. Commissioners? Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the regular meeting agenda. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, uh, the purpose of the county work session is to inform the Grant County Board of Commissioners of agenda items that will be addressed in the next regular meeting and for the department heads and other elected officials to communicate with commissioners in regard to matters in their respective departments. In accordance with Grant County Resolution 1701, we welcome the public to attend the county work session. However, there will be no public input at this meeting. So uh, at this time, Unless somebody else has something, well, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Manager Webb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. First item on your agenda um, after public input is minutes. You have four sets of minutes that were in your packet, two special meeting minutes, and then your work session and regular meeting. Moving on to financial reports, item E, approved, disapproved, December 11th, 2017 expenditure report. Randy, would you go over the highlights of that, please? Sure. Good morning. In your packet, you have an expenditure report ending uh, December 11th, totaling $2,997,857.44. Um, that includes um, accounts payable check reporting of $2,607,627.68. And payroll check reporting of three hundred and ninety thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars and seventy six cents. Uh, to highlight some of the major expenses we incurred during this period are to Firefighter Trucks Inc. Uh, totaling eighteen thousand um, dollars. This is for equipment and services on fire trucks for the Upper Members and Penal Salto's Volunteer Fire Department. A uh, check to Juniper Advisory totaling ten thousand two hundred and fifty uh, as a retainer fee and data services. A check to Wright Express Fleet Services for $23,552 for October 2017 fuel charges. <coughs> Excuse me. A check to Onsolve Intermediate Holding Company for $14,950 for Code Red Emergency Notification Service. Uh, a portion of this money is coming back to us through the municipalities that we are receiving reimbursement for them participating with this service. Uh, we have a check to TG McCauley Construction for $12,400 for Rip Rack. Rip Rap Rock for road projects. It's easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Starts with Gunny. <laughs> uh, check to White Sands Construction for $352,614. This is uh, two Casa Progress billing. Uh, check to Ascent Aviation Group for $36,323 for jet fuel and refueler lease. A check to HCP Systems, LLC, $26,261 for medical management services. <coughs> Excuse me, a check to Kriegel, Bray, Shaw & Company for $10,831 for audit progress billing. Another check to Ascent Aviation for $17,391 for jet fuel. Uh, fuel Center Plus for $17,754 for off-road diesel for road equipment. Uh, David Stevens um, for $43,834 for medical management services. Southwest Solid Waste Authority for $44,123 <coughs> October 2017 billing. Summit Food Service $22,800 for October 2017 inmate meals. J&J Signs for $66,232 for the Conference Center Sign Progress Billing. Western Builders for $84,227 uh, for a Santa Rita Fire Station Progress Billing. Tyler Technologies, $13,365 software maintenance fees. Another check to Ascent Aviation for $18,900 for jet fuel and refueler lease. 
Check to Bank of Albuquerque for $101,858 for debt service on the gross receipts bonds. A check to New Mexico Human Services Division for $90,877. This is for a quarterly safety net care pool contribution. And <clears throat> lastly, a, another check to Southwest Solid Waste Authority for 44000 for November 2017 billing. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to new business, item F. Gila Regional Medical Center financial information. Mrs. Linda Nichols will be here to make a presentation. <clears throat> Item G, quarterly senior Grant County representative report. Ms. Krista Bolt will be here to give you a, uh, she is our uh, representative on the AAA board for, our, um, for the senior citizens. She will be giving her quarterly report. <clears throat> Item H, Approved, disapproved Grant County Water Commission to submit a USDA application for the Grant County Regional Water Project remaining phases of the project. Commissioner Ramos, would you like to discuss this? I believe this is your item. Okay. On the Water Commission, what we're looking at, it's been really interesting. I just became the chairman of the Water Commission. And we Lucky have. You. <laughs> actually, it's because I was absent. <laughs> But what we're actually looking at is getting together and redoing our JPA. We really need to start looking at uh, who's going to control the actual uh, waters in the area. Um, it's just a, a, a lot of, there, there's a few things we're looking at right now. USDA wants us to go ahead and uh, put in for monies for the whole water project, which would be uh, uh, they, they wanted to go ahead and break it down in phases at first, but we're just going to go ahead and put in for all the, the, the monies for the project there, uh, which, which starts with the Hurley, <coughs> the Hurley pro Water Project, and it'll come all the way into, uh, into Baird. And it's going to be quite a few funds there. Um, I don't know a lot about it as of yet, but at the next meeting, uh, I'll be having my second meeting as a chairman and uh, I'll have a lot more information for you there. Um, so, I mean, at, at this point, I don't have very much for you. Um, we're just working through this at this point. So but we, they need our, our permission to, um, to move on with this, with this grant? Yes, they sure do. Um, I know that it was put on... I'm going to have to check real quick with the with the previous uh, chairman to see exactly what we're going to be doing with this. So I apologize, but I'll have more information for you in the next meeting. Okay. Thank so you. What do you want to do with this? Can you table it or just? Let's go ahead and leave it on for now. Okay. And we could always table it at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. And this might fall in the category of things you're going to check about, but. Uh, we're not, we're not going to be requesting full funding of the remaining phases, right? It, it, yes, we are. From and, that was re, and that was requested by USDA. All fourteen million. She really left. feels that we could get that those funds. She yeah. wants, there, there's been funds that have been left over and haven't been used in the past, and they've been looking for projects. So she wants us to go ahead and try and get it all through. So and hopefully we'll get all the cash for it. I'll be doing. But she's really optimistic. She was very excited. I, uh, uh, so let's see what we can we can get done with that. But, uh, yes, that's great. But it, it uh, you know, like I said, it, it's something new to me, and, and I'm excited to be the on the water commission. But uh, I, I, it's something I got to work on. So, but we do need to go ahead and and, uh, and keep it on the agenda. I, I really think uh, the quicker we get this done, the better. But uh, I'll, I'll have more information for you. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Commissioner Ramos? Moving on to item I, approve, disapprove Grant County Substance Abuse and Addiction Treatment Center Advisory Board Charter. I'll let Misha talk a little bit more about this in detail, um, but this is a charter that um, was put together through the planning process as Tucasa was coming to fruition. Um, this was uh, put together with help of some consultants and was based on some practices of, of other similar organizations uh, 
well, across the country, actually. So do you want to give an update of where they were on the meeting with this? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman, yeah. Commissioners. Um, so we had a, we, we've had a few Tukasa um, update meetings, and um, this is one of the, the items that has been brought up that as we're getting closer to the final construction and Tukasa uh, getting ready to open is this charter getting established. And I, I do have Dr. Bowen um, in the audience here. Um, he was instrumental in getting uh, everything going with the Tukasa, and he's here to also speak on this or answer any questions that any of you might have. And really what this does is um, describes it, what the board will be doing and what the um, membership is comprised of. So this is the first time I've seen this, but the one thing that um, <clears throat> I don't see, and since this is basically your organi organization document, um, is how and when this could be uh, Changed if it ever needed to be changed, um, assumed by the commission. Mm -hmm. Probably should say that. Uh, and membership. What is two peer consumer? What does that mean? Please come on up. Good morning. Thank you for letting me speak. Push the little white button on the mic there till it turns red. Right there we go. Uh, yeah, good morning. Thank you for letting me um, be here to answer your questions. So the peer consumers are um, individuals who have self-identified as having a significant history of serious mental illness or of substance abuse and who have maintained at least two years of uh, recovery from that and have been certified by the state through a training system that the, the state of New Mexico has for them. So that, that that's who those folks would be. And nine, nine members is, is a suitable size? I believe so. Um, that was a proposal from the original organizing group that included Ron Hall and Susie Trujillo and others. Um, and we didn't see any reason to change that number. Without it growing too big to where it's difficult. Is this something we might want to have a commissioner on in the future? Well, this goes back to... You could, I suppose, but you're appointing. You're appointing. Let me think on that one. I'm just it wondering. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's a sizable asset of the county, so it's. Well, Roman number one says that it's authorized by the Grant County Commission and will serve at the pleasure of this governing body. That's very different than the Board of Trustees, if that's what we were thinking about, which is which were governed by the legislature. That's right. Okay. Sure. Um, Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, some people really don't want commissioners in the room. I, I, I think having commissioners in the room is a, is a big asset to our, to our project, actually. We've, we've enjoyed their presence in our ongoing planning meetings, and I would certainly welcome a, a commissioner on, the, on this body as well. I know we've got at least one, maybe two, that would, that would, really, it would really suit. I agree, and I think, you know, thinking long term, it's a good way to, to keep it connected and not have it drift on the yeah. air. <laughs> okay. Any so, other questions? So I think I read, well, I'm not sure what I read the paper this morning, so I'll just <laughs> ask the question. Did, uh, have some of these members already been, is, is part of this committee already been put together? Obviously not. No. Uh, no okay. Not. You, you appoint them. Okay. Well, that's what I'm reading here, but yeah. Okay. I do think that. So there's some interest, obviously, from some community members, but they haven't been appointed yet. Okay. Well, we've had our, our, our group that has been very active in, in helping get this set up. Uh, I don't know how active Ron is anymore, but you know, Ron Hall was very active. Um, uh, Alicia's been active. Uh, 
Ms. Trujillo. Susie's been very active. Christopher. 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 Uh, Dr. Bowen. Uh, Dr. Bowen. Uh, Dr. Bowen. Mike Carrillo. Misha. Mike Carrillo. Okay, okay, that's the so committee I'm thinking of. Okay. Out there that have, I mean, there's probably already a core group that would make sense at the beginning to, because they've already, they've already shown uh, their willingness, one, to work, and two, their passion for the issue. That answers my question. That's what I was thinking of. Thank you. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. I really think that we need to get at least one commissioner on there. I mean, I, 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 it just makes sense. Well, we may have in that membership thing to four community members on. So we could update it to two HMS providers, two care consumers, four community members, and one county commissioner. Yeah, do you have any problem with that? No, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Any other questions for the doctor? I don't know if it's for Dr. Bowen or, or for Charlene. Uh, this obviously overlaps with the stepping up initiative that we're just beginning to explore. Uh, is there anything we need to do anticipating that? Because I don't even know enough about the structure of stepping up to know what to anticipate, but I want to make sure that we're thinking about that. We are, and Dr. Bowen and I, um, I hope to schedule a follow-up meeting with him after the first of the year, but we've had some initial conversations about HMS's role in stepping up and the role of TUPASA in that process, and it really um, goes hand in hand, ties very closely together, and the possibility of also uh, using uh, TUPASA as a uh, crisis triage triage center, which is also a very critical component of stepping up. So those are future discussions. Um, it doesn't inhibit what we're doing here or TUPASA. It's just really um, TUPASA supports that initiative um, tremendously. I mean, it, is, it will be a huge asset to, to be able to make that whole program come together. Great. Great. Thanks so Mike. Do you want to add to that? Because I know you've done your own research with, with that. I, with you, it, it, I think it helps provide for a pretty seamless uh, continuum of care for folks who have been in, incarcerated and have substance abuse or mental health issues. Yeah. That's great to hear. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So we will make uh, those... I'll get Abby to put in the, the legal language about the ability to change this in the time frame, and then we will amend the membership to include one commissioner and change the community members to four to still comprise a total board of nine. Does that sound good? That's suitable. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And I assume they thought about this one term only. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> the one term only. Uh, clause, we all think that's yeah, that's, that's a good, good idea. But, but yeah. it does make uh, makes for new thoughts, but it also lacks continuity. That's exactly my concern. Can you tell us why the one term? Yes. <clears throat> Again, that was a proposal from Ron Hall, and um, and because of the and I don't see the language in this, but there's supposed to be overlapping terms so that yeah, it, every two years people are coming off of it and new people are coming it's on. Staggered. It's staggered. It's three That's right. per year for three year terms, and that plus the the providers from HMS should provide that continuity piece, and 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 at the same time allow for new thoughts and, and new perspectives. So is it providers from HMS strictly for? To CASA, or is it any provider at HMS? The language is any provider at HMS. So we would certainly, you know, so we, we would have to pay for it being one mental health provider and one medical provider, so we get both sides of the equation there. Okay. Is that something we can always yeah, change when exactly. they come to us and say, no, we can't get anybody to apply for this job? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that would happen. <laughs> How many either? No, this is out. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments we need to? No. No more minutes? Okay. The laptops are working so much better today. They're already here. Good. We're getting there. We're getting almost kind of us. Actually, it is never us. It might be somebody's fault, but it's not ours. <laughs> Moving on to agreements, item J. 
approve disapprove agreement A1744 professional services contract between SkyWest Media and Grant County to design and develop a website. Uh, the county's been working with uh, SkyWest over the past uh, several weeks to develop a scope of work to um, come up with an estimate to uh, develop a new website and this contract uh, takes care of that. Um, when will it be up? When will it be it's up? It's, yeah, so um, the total is 23000 plus tax, which I thought was a very uh, fair price to completely um, completely redo our website. I do have to um, thank Kevin Hobbs and Hubs in our office. He's been very instrumental in gathering the data and putting it all together in order to save us some money moving forward if we could do. We've done a lot of the light work on our own in order to, to keep the cost down. So um, I think you guys have seen some of their website, some of their video capability. Um, they're also a local, local vendor, so um, it's our recommendation that um, we move forward with SkyWest. Do you have any questions, comments? Harry, I can tell you're thinking. If you don't mind, let me review it. So where it says SkyWest has creative control and is free to use its best judgment, uh, does that mean that we can't tell them something is unacceptable? No. I mean, I'm sure you don't anticipate it meaning that, but why Why does it say they maintain creative control if, in fact, they don't maintain creative control? Well, I think creative control, and maybe we can reword that, that it's not creative control. Maybe it's, you know, creative judgment or um, I'm not sure why it would say control. Um, they've been... I'm working with them currently on the website for the conference center, and if I don't like something, I tell them I don't like that, and they take it. Um, it's not been an issue. Um, as far as control, I mean, they're telling us this is the best way to do this or this or this um, in order to save money and to have a very user-friendly, um, public accessible website, not like what we have now. Um, but if we can remove the word control, we can change that. No. Okay, I mean, that would make me feel more comfortable. I think uh, the fact is that we will own the content once they deliver it. And so, obviously, on February 1, we can make any changes that we think. So, that would be fine. If you don't manage to get it changed, it's obviously not a big deal. Sure. Do we need to start shaming commissioners who have not provided content? Yeah, I think so. Are you, are you the only one that has? <laughs> <laughs> that would be time to decide which real picture I'm going to put in. Well, we're even willing to get your picture taken for you if you'll just give us your bio so we can put your information on there. Please you don't have a past. <laughs> I am really, really pleased to have been forward with this. On Sunday, I attended you know another event where. First, maybe it was the second question. Was when are you going to fix the website? And so I get that regularly. So thank you. Any other questions or comments? Proposed amendments? Is it just a headshot? Yes. No, we're going to post it. No. <laughs> it's just a headshot. <laughs> Guess that's enough. Sure, Brad. We'll put whatever picture you want on there. <laughs> okay. Very nice. All right. I'm in favor of an informal. That's I don't think we should do the professional thing. I think my response when you emailed that out was. You know, as long as we're all out in the Gila backpacking, then I'm fine with doing it. Well, I'm at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. See, so I think we should use photos like that. I think that's true. Whatever, you're, whatever you would like to do. All that's right. Fine. Awesome. We get creative we control. put meals in there, that's fine, too. <laughs> okay. Um, if you're ready, we can move on. <laughs> I'm about meals. 
Four it took us a year to get them to where they loosen up. They're watch out, it's going to get too loose. Can't happen. <laughs> Item K. Approve, disapprove resolution number R1756, policy for renting and use of Bataan Memorial Park Pavilion and Concession Facilities. Randy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. So this is, we, we had one meeting with the Parks and Rec Committee. Uh, there was a lot of discussion moving forward about how we make some changes to that. And uh, the majority was the employee discount. Um, and that's basically what's going away, um, is that discount to employees. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Um, I don't... I think that's basically it. The, the, the prices were going to stay the same, but everybody was going to pay the same share um, along with uh, the deposit. And that was just on the clock, right? Yes. And, and I think the discussion was is that they weren't, we really weren't getting enough to keep maintaining the building after the right. parties, correct? Yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ramos, that's correct. And apparently we've eliminated the possibility of them contracting for their own liquor provider. That's uh, all. That has not changed, and that was in the initial resolution. All this has gone through council with uh, Ms. Robinson. Well, I see crossed off here unless pre-approved by the county. So it does say it's prohibited. It's prohibited in here. You took that off. It used to be prohibited unless approved. Now it's just plain old approved. Prohibited. Correct. Perhaps that was part of that discussion about the difficulty. Well, I mean, in, in the initial, so, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Brown, so, in the initial documentation, it did say that without county commission approval. The problem was is nobody really had that full document or would get copies of the document like they were supposed to. So, in the initial application, we just thought it would be better to put that on the application that they that, so that they read it, um, that it is prohibited to have alcohol beverages on it. At the baton park. Is it, is it prohibited or not prohibited to have alcohol beverages in the park? I don't know if I can answer that question, Mr. Chairman. Well, I think whatever you do with one, you ought to do with the other. Well, I think it's for the entire facility. So the problem is, is there's no there's no oversight uh, when it comes to, to that. So we you know there's there's no I mean law enforcement can show up. It's, it's a public park. Uh, now the rental facility is something different because they're actually renting it from us. So I, I would think that within the park itself, um, unless the, the commission has something that says they're allowed alcohol on on the public park, it would be just like golf park downtown. Right. Unless you had some kind of permit, um, that's the way I see it. Okay, so what you said to me with um, your your proposed changes, item ten says any cell service and or consumption of alcohol anywhere in the park is prohibited. Period. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. none okay. anywhere. No permits. No nothing. No alcohol in the entire park. So that's what you submitted. Okay, then that's what I submitted. <laughs> Okay, so that phrase is in a policy that seems to apply only to the pavilion and concession facilities, which is a little item confusing. Is. Well, so item 10 applies to the entire park, but it's within an agreement that only applies to a piece of the park, which is somewhat inconsistent logically. The other part of the park is public, so you can't prohibit so it, anyone from being in there. You can't... Um, so we can only rent this part, right. portions of the park, I think is where they were going right. with that. So what, are, what is your, um, you've done some research on, on figuring out that this was originally funded as a walking park. Is there any language in any of that documentation that you found that specifies alcohol? There, the there is not, uh, Mr. Chairman and Shirley, there, there is not in the original documents. Again, it was just a walking public park like any other public facility that people have access to it, free access to it, without being charged. The problem with or the issue with the Baton Park, it became a leased piece of property from the county. And that's where all of this other, there was never a, a, a whole document that said anything about the park besides where the funding came from the state legislature to to continue to, uh, you know, make this park happen for the public. Okay, so, so my, my concern is sort of a legal, I don't know, catch-22, I guess. Uh, I read number 10 that Charlene just, just read out loud. 
as a statement of fact independent of this agreement because this agreement only applies to people who are renting the pavilion or the concession stand. And yet this statement applies to anybody using the park. So I only want that statement to be in there if, in fact, it's true elsewhere that any sale or consumption of alcohol anywhere in the same park is, in fact, prohibited. I'm wondering if we don't need to pass another resolution stating that. If it doesn't exist already, then we do need to. That's exactly where I'm going. So what we could do is we could amend item number 10 to only pertain to the concession stand and the pavilion. So any sale, service, and or consumption of alcohol in the pavilion and or concession stand is prohibited. And then we can address alcohol in the other. Perfect. That would eliminate the logical problem here. Now, my next question, if you don't mind, is so we have we have prohibited alcohol and probably going to in the park. But under what is that really need to be an ordinance? So it has teeth in it. Sure. You want us to be able to enforce it. We would have to have an ordinance to be able to issue a citation and send it through the court. Other than that, we could just go and tell me you can't have alcohol and that's it. We won't be able to enforce it fully without the ordinance number. So I think this can be a little more of a process than just. I do think we can tell anybody leasing it. You don't have the ability to buy, sell, give away, have alcohol in our pavilion or our concession stand. I think that is the proper way to handle this particular. So I agree completely on that point. And on the first one, I guess I'm surprised that there isn't such an ordinance already. I suppose I thought that there was just like I think Randy was saying. You can't just walk in the golf park and start drinking unless you've got a permit. Right. But you're in a city limit. OK, that's because of the city ordinance. There's no parallel county ordinance. OK. It means to me. And if you want to do that, I mean, the only two parks we own are that one in the North Hurley Park, I think. And just recently learned we own Kela, too. I didn't agree to that. No, you didn't. So before your time. So we could address all of the parks at the same time in that ordinance. And we will amend item number 10 to only pertain to what this agreement covers. Does that work? It works for me. Sure. I just have a question. If this ordinance is passed, are you looking at setting up signage at the parks with the ordinance number on it so the public is aware of this? And we will have to. Well, then we'll be able to take action if need be. And that's that's actually a park that's within another municipality. Maybe. Right. Maybe that municipality. Maybe we should check on their ordinance. Right. It's the only park we own that's in within within another municipality. So maybe before we even go that far, we ought to check on that. Mr. Chairman, and you are correct. We are not handling calls at that park anymore. Something about it has taken that over. And that they were whatever an agreement was made with them. We'll respond to it if they're not available. But they are given the first call. Which is after four o'clock. Yes. OK. Well, that's enough about something that's not even on the. Yeah, really. On the menu today. So. OK. So I will amend item number 10. Thanks. I am L. Approved disapproved resolution are 1757. A resolution to accept donation of a used fire truck from Donia Ana County. This is for P.A. Volunteer Fire Department for L.S. Mesa. Randy or Lucy, you want to speak on this? In order to be within compliance, we'll need a class A engine. Class A engines are in the cost of over two, three hundred thousand. For now, we're looking at a truck from Donia Ana County, which their commission has already approved to allow it to be donated. So it is a 
1989 Class A engine. Uh, Jeff Woods Incorporated who is our um, person that works on all of our trucks and does all the maintenance on our vehicles for Grant County Fire Department has looked at this truck. Um, and uh, Chief Whitmarsh, do you have anything to add uh, with that, with Mr. Woods and uh, moving forward? Good morning and thank you. Um, yes, we did um, request a purchase order to have um, Firefighter Trucks Incorporated, which is the Jeff Woods Corporation, um, completely go over the truck and also do a pump test um, before we actually um, take possession of the truck because we don't want to uh, end up with something that um, would require a lot of service. Are there any other questions? Uh, only is there any age restriction in state laws such as exists for school buses regarding fire engine? Um, it's not an age restriction as far as use, um, but the uh, <clears throat> state fire funds cannot be used to uh, provide service for the truck, um, but we do have county excise tax funds and we can maintain the truck with that. And uh, we also have, um, we already have an existing truck uh, that we have in service that is very serviceable that fits into that category and it does not affect our um, insurance organization um, any of that part of it. It's just that the state fire marshal office will not approve making repairs and maintenance and that part of um, servicing the truck for their funds. And that's, there's some threshold in terms of either mileage or other kind of use or age? That age. It's just age. Yeah. And is that why Las Cruces is getting rid of this truck? Um, they replaced it with a new truck. Um, and so it was available uh, to be donated to uh, Red County. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. I don't think it was it was at that time when they were ready to let it go. They were again, um, as fire departments do the state of New Mexico, continue to use carryover money uh, because they're in the process of looking at their fleet. Doniana County, a large fire department, um, is constantly looking, and we all are looking at ways before they meet that threshold or they get there, is to try to look and try to replace those, even if it's five to ten years down the road. And, and is the threshold 25 years? What? It's, uh, yes, 25 years. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks for um, searching this out and getting a truck donated. What would a new truck cost? Well, we had um, <clears throat> been working on that process, and um, a new Class A engine costs about $350,000. And this one costs the cost of getting it looked over. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and the cost is in the truck of three, over 350 or 350,000 does not come equipped. So you're looking at another probably twenty twenty five thousand dollars even beyond that to equip it. So it meets the uh, NFPA standards. Oh, well, thanks. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on, item M. Approve disapprove resolution R1758, statement of vacation of Turnerville subdivision plot. This was a resolution that was requested by the clerk's office. Um, she needed further documentation in order to record the vacation of the Turner subdivision plot, which she did at the last meeting. She needed something with uh, commission signature as well as reports. Connie, do you want to add anything to that? But, so it's just further documentation to record that in the clerk's office. doesn't change anything we've done. <coughs> Next item N, approve disapprove resolution number R1759, authorizing and approving submission of a completed application for financial assistance and project approval to the New Mexico Finance Authority. Misha? 
Thank you, uh, Chairman. <coughs> we, uh, the volunteer fire department for Whiskey Creek, it's the Rosedale Road um, station, um, has uh, a need to have an uh, addition done to it, and it's for the the rating that it's already. That's correct, right? It's for the rating that it, it currently has. Um, we have to have this addition done. So we've been working with uh, ASA Architects. Um, we have some preliminary designs done, and um, based on the estimated costs and the amount of money that the Whiskey Creek Fire Department has for carryover, this is the amount of funding that we see needed to make that addition happen. And the, the payback will happen with their um, state fire funds. That's how. Uh, right. And they're just adding a training room. It's a, there's a there's a training room. There's a restroom um, that's required, and then also um, there's a requirement for them to have the ability to. I don't really understand. It, it's a where they take off the the dirty clothes, so it's not contaminating. They have to have a certain area when they come back from a fire, um, so that they can. Um, not contaminate, stay the training room based on what they come back with from the fire. I think that makes sense. <laughs> Let's move on. There's no further questions. Moving on to item O. Approved, disapproved resolution R1760, a resolution amending the purchasing card program. These amendments were um, suggested by our auditor. Um, most of them with the exception of um, the, the first thing that we added was allowing the use of the P-card for mills in the event that um, we have an emergency inmate transport or care of inmates. Sometimes when um, inmates are transported to the hospital and then we have to transport them to Albuquerque or El Paso, guards are going quickly and they so they haven't in the past been able to use the P-card in order to either um, get hotel rooms or meals and so this would allow um, the P card to be used in that event. We also added a language that states the department head needs to approve statements on a monthly basis. That's just been something that slipped through the cracks so we've added that particular language in there that they must um, approve the statements every month. Um, whether they have charges or not they still have to acknowledge it and approve it in the system. Um, also added that the P-card user statements must be reconciled with the correct funds and descriptions on a monthly basis. So um, sometimes whenever the, um, the owner of the card is, is reconciling their statement, they're not uh, putting in the correct funds. And so that's their responsibility to do that. So we've added that language. Um, and also added that uh, the P-Cards are not allowed for fast food chains and room service, um, which has is, is, um, also happened in the past. So the only time that it could be used in the event of like fast food would be for an inmate related transport. So that's the only additional language that we've added. So what, what is the ramification for misusing your card? So um, there are... Uh, it can lead up to termination if there's repeated um, repeated violations. Um, it starts with a written warning. Um, you can be responsible for those charges if you violate this policy. It can be terminated. Um, if it's a large enough violation, then um, charges can be filed. What about the, the, the violators that may be um, <clears throat> like volunteers? Well, not a lot of discipline that can be happened there, but you do approve the roster, say if it's a volunteer fire department, you do approve that roster of those um, members, so you can choose not to um, approve that particular individual's membership on that volunteer fire department roster. Or they could lose P-card privileges. They would, well, obviously, yeah, they're going to, I forgot that part. Um, they would lose P-card privileges, um, but if there's continued abuse, there is. I've always thought we had too many out there. We've cleaned that up. Um, that was a rather alarming discovery when I first started, the um, amounts we were spending each month on P-cards and the number of P-cards that were out there. So those have been turned back considerably. Um. Did I just hear that a piece of the enforcement is not requiring repayment? It is requiring. Okay, it can just, require just, repayment. Excellent. So I would have thought that would be yeah, top of the list. 
So, any other questions? No? Next item P, approve, disapprove RFP 1801, Strategic Communications and Engagement Consulting Services. This RFP was um, for, um, yeah. no, I can't get mine to work. You have to go all the way out and back in. This is for uh, public, uh, to uh, hire a public relations firm to assist the county with the communications with the community in regards to the Juniper Advisory Project with um, Gila Regional Medical Center. We released this RFP. Um, one response was received from Gerard, Phillips, Kate, and Hancock. And we have a short-term agreement with them currently. Um, they are also working on some other projects um, in Yuma, Arizona, Georgia, Florida. Um, they've been uh, really good to work with thus far, very um, open um, to learning about the community and the situation and listening very carefully to what our concerns and needs are. So it's our recommendation that we award this RFP for them to continue through um, till that process um, is completed. Questions? Okay. Moving on, item Q, approve, disapprove IFB Bid number B1705, hauling and delivery of pit run and other road material for the Grant County Road Department. We tabled this in a previous meeting. Um, it's going to be my recommendation that we reject this, as well as item R, which is approved, disapprove IFB bid number B1706, road materials for the Grant County Road Department. There was um, a mistake that was discovered. Um, and these, and I would just, just, it would just be better if we rejected and released those at a later date. There was some confusion with some dates and some language in those. Well, you have to take action one way or the other, so it would just be my recommendation that we reject those. You, you have that language statute allows you to do that. So, uh, the memo associated with item Q uh, says accept bid 1705 and reject bid 1706. There's been some further... So that memo... Okay. I didn't fact. hear you wrong. In it's, fact, we're... It's going to be my recommendation okay. for um, just for transparency and clarification purposes. We reject them both. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to uh, health care claims board item S. Approved, disapprove November 2017 health plan claims in the amount of $14,965.35. And there were seven claims to Gila Regional Medical Center in the amount of $10,066.60. Two claims to Gila Regional Ambulance in the amount of $4,898.75. So that would be for the November claims. That's item S. Item T, approve, disapprove remaining amount for October 2017 um, health claims in the amount of $665.84. This was a mistake I made in October whenever we were denying the, particular, the claims that were back from May. So as you've noticed, there's two different amounts um, on their uh, reports, the approved amount and the amount billed and I looked at the wrong column and subtracted incorrectly. So we still owe 665.84 for October. So rather than lumping that all together, we separated that out for clarity. Any questions on those? And uh, the only other item other than the regular reports is executive session in accordance with NMSA 1978-1015-1, Section H, pending opioid litigation. We'll be discussing that. And that concludes the agenda, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. We'll move into county reports. Mike, are you ready? Answer, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner, my report. 
Uh, for the month of November, uh, for the time period November 3rd to December 14th. Item number one, just an explanation of uh, the Accreditation Council and uh, what we were reviewing as the accredit Accreditation Council. We've been looking at some changes in det detention general policy standards and we'll continue with those and have discussions with those uh, during the legislative session. We're going to meet again. So there are some changes that are coming up that um, all the det detention centers are going to have to. Uh, change in their policy standards. Uh, item number two on our detention facility update. Uh, we currently have four vacancies or four applicants that were tested on November 12, 2017 for these vacancies. Um, just to note, a meeting with Tommy Villalobos from the Department of Labor was held on Wednesday the 6th. Uh, Mr. Villalobos presented to myself and Manager Webb a uh, presentation on a work key assessment program uh, which um, Mr. Villalobos and I had looked at previously and this program is assist in the hiring of qualified applicants for, and the possibility of being a resource for the Stepping Out program. Um, another note is our new facility group, uh, Core Values, uh, started in December 1st. Edie Mitchell is the CEO and she's been down here the whole time. Uh, the medical group is doing a tremendous job and we're uh, so far we're very pleased with uh, everything that they're doing at the facility. Item number three, the assessment uh, remains the same. Um, item number four, the training update. We had two newly hired detention officers uh, who completed their CPR certification and we will continue with the renewing the CPR certifications for the entire facility. On our intervention, the stepping up program, again we uh, had a meeting uh, November 16th with um, uh, some resource providers and I listed all those for you. Um, also uh, continues to plan, um, I came down from Las Cruces to put on the program for the stepping up and we essentially formed a subcommittee uh, to explore the continuation of the program. Uh, another note, Western New Mexico University in partnership with the detention center Again, this year we will be providing Christmas gifts for the children of the inmates in Western New Mexico University. Um, when we talked about this several years ago, uh, they were the ones that came up with it and we're assisting them with that program. And I'd like to recognize uh, A. Villarreal from Western New Mexico University for his help. He's always doing a lot to help us at the detention center. He also helped us with the inmate art project. So I thank him for that and we'll be dispersing uh, the gifts here prior to Christmas to the children of the inmates. Um, item number six in the recognition program. Employee of the month was Officer Ashley Urbina. She's one of our recently newly hired officers. Um, her work ethics have been excellent, uh, which include her report writing, attention to detail, and her organizational skills. Officer Urbina is always asking questions and displayed an eagerness to learn the responsibilities associated with corrections. And for that reason, uh, the Grand County Detention <coughs> Center recognizes Officer Urbina as Officer of the Month. She's doing very well and we're very proud of her. On our item number seven, our statistics, the average daily population for December 14th to 78, 11 less than last reporting period. High population males, 63, 31 less than last reporting period. High population females of 15, 12 less than last reporting period. Currently for December 14th, there are 80 uh, inmates on December 14th, there was 80 inmates incarcerated in the facility, which is 11 less than last month, last month booked in the facility and uh, the CJI 5 report. Item number eight on our monthly arrest total for November of 2017, Silver City Police Department had 66, Grant County Sheriff's Department had 30, New Mexico State Police 24, Baird Police 8, Santa Clara 2, Hurley had 3, and uh, that was all of the arrests that were made by the agencies. Now, there was one, we're currently holding one inmate for another facility, and that facility in um, Hidalgo County. The detention uh, facility transports, uh, probation, warrants, and special management, 48 district court transports. Uh, district 1, we had 38. Magistrate court, district 2, magistrate court, we had 7. And that was it for the court transports, medical transport during this reporting period. Total 14, total number of transports equaled 107 as compared to 65 last month. Medical transports were slightly higher during the reporting period. The district Court and Magistrate Court Division 1 recorded increases uh, for this reporting period. 
probation violations. We had 14. And we don't have any parole violators currently in the facility. Inmates awaiting transport sentence to rehab, totaling five. Total inmates charged with warrants is 68. And the total number of special management on October 12, total 11. That's my report, sir. Uh, I noticed the uh, number of unconvicted detainees is the lowest I've seen since I've been up here, 59 out of the 80. And I'm wondering, is that related to the constitutional amendment that we passed that changed the, the bonding situation, or is that just, just um, fluctuates? No, it does fluctuate, sir. And usually uh, we, have, we have those peaks and valleys, and usually uh, right about either prior to and um, during the holiday seasons and stuff, we have that, we have those peaks. And then after the first of the year, then we start to spike again. So that's usually, that's, that's been pretty normal. I will get my hopes up then. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All of our projects are, are done and closed out now, so we're strictly back to maintenance. We've been really uh, concentrating on patching the last couple of weeks, uh, and we'll continue to do that weather permitting. Uh, we do. I do have a small crew out there at the airport. We're kind of helping Rebecca out, out there uh, on some safety problems, and I met with Misha and Randy and Rebecca out there, and we're looking at expanding that parking lot out there using the millings that they have stockpiled out there to get rid of them and give them some more room out there so we'll probably be done out there with that probably by the, hopefully by the end of next week weather permitting okay and that's about it questions okay. thank you Misha thank you Chairman and Commissioner She's changing it up <laughs> confused me for a minute um, on Chitasa construction is moving forward and we're on schedule um, sheetrock is up and it's being textured. Uh, stucco uh, for the exterior is complete. Um, did a walkthrough uh, last week with uh, um, a few of the HMS employees, Dr. Bowen, one of them. Um, so they got to see the progress also. And their uh, board is going to do a walkthrough on Thursday morning. Um, they're actually having a board meeting here in town. So uh, Dr. Bowen wants to uh, take them through the, through the building. Uh, San Rita Fire Station, we had a few minor changes with the electrical and the water, uh, but we got both of those uh, figured out, and construction is, is moving forward again. We, Randy and I drove out there yesterday, and they were starting to put up the beams for the metal building. So, uh, The conference center sign, um, construction of the sign is complete, so um, we, we have that up. It is operational if you haven't seen it, um, and just kind of playing with the software on it currently. Uh, Scott's doing a great job with it. He's been able to get some good... Uh, videos on there. Um, they, they're very clear. I'm, I'm happy with that. Lower members, volunteer fire department in Faywood. Um, construction has started on a 40,000 gallon um, storage tank that they needed also for um, ISO ratings out there. Um, airport construction has begun on the backup generator for the main terminal. Uh, energy audit. Uh, contractors almost completed all the site visits, and last week they were here with the, the subcontractors for the solar, and uh, they hope to have estimates on, on that very soon. And the Colonius application is complete. Um, I received an email from, the, uh, from Santa Fe that uh, they've received everything, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Any questions? Questions for me? One. Uh, you mentioned the energy audit uh, having estimates soon. Is that the same as the report that's called for by our agreement with them? No. What uh, what they do is they get estimates from the different subs that they brought in, and then they decide which one they're going to partner with to finalize the report for us. It, do we have an expected date of receiving that report? Uh, I was talking to Scott Stevens, trying to trying to pin him down because he he gave me an indication that it, it was it was fairly quick, and I said, well, what is fairly quick? I, actually, the request of Charlene, um, you, because there's some other questions that that he was asking of us um, in terms of uh, you know how, how we're going to look at proceeding uh, with the project and financing it or funding it, and uh, he kind of went back and forth with me on you know two months, maybe three. Um, so 
that's uh, that, that's kind of what the answer was that I got from him. So I, I don't I don't consider that as close as I thought he was indicating. So. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Randy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to start off really with Cora Caminos. I know uh, the fiscal year ended uh, October 1st, and I wanted the director to come and just give me some ridership numbers and how we closed out uh, at the end of the year. So, Ken, if you can, you can start, please. Good morning. Um, we ended our fiscal year um, under budget as projected. Um, we were able to put up two new shelters, one at on 32nd Street, um, at a church there and one at the food basket. Um, our final ridership for the year was 95,233, which is a little over a thousand rides um, less than last year. Honestly, that's, that's better than what I predicted um, due to budget cutbacks. Some of our partners were facing, um, they provide passes for our passengers, free passes. Um, they had some budget cutbacks. Um, that I thought was going to impact us more than it did. So <clears throat> that loss is better than, than what I thought it was going to be. Um, as far as the new routes, we're still working, um, identifying stops, um, times. It's, it's not an easy, quick thing. We've rejected several p proposed routes and stops. So we're still working on that. We're communicating with DOT. They're happy as long as we're working on it. We don't have a, a deadline as far as that goes. So it's it's working. That was Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Kim. So moving on to the fire departments, uh, you know, we, we obviously you knew about the fire at Mule Creek we had last month, um, Tyrone, Whiskey Creek, and Gila Cliff, and I were all on that. Um, Tyrone, for 51 years, Tyrone has put Santa on a fire truck and went to the community giving out um, goodie bags that were provided by a lot of our vendors that we uh, purchased stuff with. And so we were able to hand out uh, last Monday over 400 bags to the children in Tyrone. So I thought that was a good uh, for Tyrone. Again, they've been doing that. Uh, for over 51 years and so we're trying to keep that tradition going so I want to thank Chief Groves and all the people over at Tyrone. Again uh, on Whiskey Creek's uh, addition going back to that real quick it, uh, it is considered right now that that station as a substation which the funding isn't as much as much once we get this construction completed it will become a main station for Whiskey Creek which will increase their uh, state fire fund money as well. So my goal when I came in as fire management officer was to continue to work towards those ISO ratings to get them down. Um, the more we bring them down the more funding the departments will have uh, to protect our community. Lucy having the Ellis Mesa station, Santa Rita building a new station uh, and so this is uh, continuing um, you know moving forward. Uh, the problem we have is, is just keeping uh, memberships as well and so we're working on that working on a long-term plan uh, with the rural fire chiefs association and making sure that uh, right now we have over 300 volunteer firefighters and EMS within Grant County on all our nine districts and so we're going to continue to work at that and make sure that that grows um, airport again we should talked about the uh, uh, generator uh, we had the fuel farm inspected by Philip 66 uh, which comes in desert annual inspection. Uh, we were uh, perfect. We had no deficiencies within the fuel farm operations, and I want to thank Rebecca and Carlos and the crew out there. Uh, they, uh, they have 7,000 locations that they uh, have fuel sold from and inspections, and only 1,600 are, are without deficiencies, and we are one of those. So I'm really proud of the way we're handling the, the, the fire. Uh, the fire base, uh, the fuel base operations out there. Um, last year, this is from Rebecca Great Lakes service. The 2014 in 2014 saw only 12, 1,100 passengers boarding. Through the end of November, we've had 9,800 people have flown through Boutique at Grand County Airport. So that goes to show you, I, I'm out there uh, consistently helping with fueling, and I see it. And that's why I want to thank Earl and his crew for helping us. It's packed. Uh, we need to make some changes where people park. It's kind of get clogged up in there. And so we're working hard to get um, 
you know, get that thing uh, situated and making sure that, that it's safe uh, and people are safe with their vehicles being out there. And so the lighting, we've cleaned up a lot. The guys have taken a lot of the uh, we uh, the uh, file the um, wildlife uh, has. We've worked with them because of the birds. Obviously, airports, you shouldn't have trees out there because of the birds and the issues with that. So we've eliminated a lot of those um, Chinese elms that have been along the side where people have rented, uh, that we've rented uh, our hangars out to private uh, plane owners. Uh, so we cleaned it up, and I encourage you to, you know, take a drive out there and take a look at what Rebecca, since she's come on, has done. I'm really proud to... Uh, that she is out there on a daily basis and making sure that the airport operations are running and, and moving forward of, of trying to generate some, some revenue out there. So, so um, 9,800 passengers on what day? Uh, through the end of November. From, from January to the end of November. Oh, and so... Um, and that's all flights. That's Phoenix and Albuquerque. That's correct. And, and so... And... Um, <coughs> So uh, the airport has sold 14,600 gallons of aviation fuel just in November. And so we're continuing to work at that, too. We're, we're getting um, other uh, people in, military and crane and contractors that come in, and it isn't even in fire season yet. So we're looking at moving forward and, and looking at generating more revenue from the fuel standpoint. And so we'll have a, a kind of a, a breakdown of that to come uh, the quarter of 2018. So that's all I have, unless you have any other questions. 890 passengers a month. That's pretty good. It's very good. Yep. Over, 30, some over 30 a day. It's about the month. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chen, we're fueling them four times a day, uh, both teams. And sometimes more than that when they've got issues or they've got to bring another plane in because of passengers. But uh, the terminal is full, and so uh, we're glad to see that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've never taken the Phoenix flight. Are those also eight seaters? Yes. I've flown from Phoenix to here. It was nice. So I'm just continuing with the math exercise since it's my favorite subject. If we're doing 30 a day in four flights, it seems to me four flights capacity is 32 a day. We're really close to 100%. That's amazing. Last time I flew from Phoenix, it was completely full. Okay. Uh, when you say four flights, you don't know there's an up and back, so right. there's really eight. Thank you. That seems mm -hmm. much more. I didn't want to correct you. <laughs> no, I'm, not that <laughs> I'm not that kind of That's guy. eight flights right coming in. Is there any measurement you have to know, or, and, and Boutique's done really well as compared to the former provider, but to know how many of those flights are canceled? I understood that the oncologist flying down the other day had to cancel appointments because the flight was late. Well, there, there's always going to be issues, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Billings, with, with, with aviation. I mean, weather, um, some people um, cancel out and they try to, you know, book those flights with somebody trying to come in. So uh, you, you're going to get that. I don't have any major statistics. Or, or you have, say that you have a flight coming in from Denver that flies over here that's had some issues on the ground over there. Uh, and so the people are waiting for that flight to get to Albuquerque to get to here to maybe get to Phoenix. So if any time you have an issue in the fleet, whether it be maybe Carlsbad or Albuquerque or Denver or even Phoenix, we had a flight uh, this weekend uh, fly halfway here and had to be turned around because of weather. Um, and so that caused a, a, just a row of, of setbacks. And finally, when it got here, the plane had some issues and they had to cancel the flight. So yes, that's going to happen. Um, and, but I, I don't know as far as statistics how Boutique is doing on as far as cancellation. Well, I do know that just without the statistics, the reliability is a lot better. That's why people, are, in my opinion, are flying on it. That's why my family flies on it. Great Lakes was so unreliable that we, uh, you know, at the last minute you had to make a five-hour drive to Phoenix right. and back in the middle of the night. It, was, it became useless, and we just decided it was better to plan the trip, and I think that's why your ridership was... <coughs> And, and, and again, with, with, 
Yes, sir. And Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Bills, again, with, with Rebecca on the ground or at the airport every single day, so those communications with Boutique, um, any issues we have are, co are consistent, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, uh, whether they're going to, uh, you know, what we, I get emails consistently if there's going to be within an, within an hour or 50 minutes most of the time or whether a flight's going to be late and the reason why it's going to be late. Uh, that's for fueling purposes, but passengers probably get the same emails as well, uh, trying to figure out why uh, a flight's going to be late or, or, it's, or it's canceled. Well, congratulations to you guys. Thank you for making those changes. Right. And, and uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, on another note, too, we, we did meet, uh, um, I think it was the 13th of December, with the county manager and some of our local agencies. The uh, federal aviation requires us to have an emergency plan in place obviously in case we have an incident or an accident. Um, and so I want to thank all the stakeholders there, whether the Sheriff's Department was there, uh, Gila Regional, uh, Gilbert from Emergency Management, just so that we have a plan in place. And what, what is going to take place, God forbid, that we have uh, any kind of accident or even an incident where uh, we had one last year where a plane uh, was uh, uh, mail, uh, had mail on it, forgot to put the runway forgot to put the landing gear down and slid on our runway, um, that kind of stuff. And so we have to be prepared uh, with that, with training, and we're going to set up a table exercise here in the next couple of months. Sure, I had some questions. Okay. Uh, you've advertised uh, a position out there. Uh, somebody came up and uh, said he was a former uh, airplane technician, and he had seen that listing. It was his impression that the things we were asking for uh, were far out of line with the $12 an hour salary. Uh, I know nothing about it myself, but I'm concerned that if that's true, we're not going to get applicants. So my question is, have we had applicants for that position? And I have, I have not, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brown, I have not looked to see if we've, we've had applicants, to be honest with you. Um, Renee's been in and out, and so I, I haven't really sat down. The deadline is the 27th of December. Still a ways away. That's still a ways away. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, for basic ground maintenance out there, I really believe we're, we're there. Um, and, and then obviously helping us with the fuel. Uh, it's basic what it is, but it's, you know, running the equipment out there, cleaning. I think they must have thrown in everything they might possibly be asked to do. It's well, and the, and the thing is, this is because we're limited resources, uh, limited personnel out there. Yeah, you might have asked to be do a little bit more, but but your basic everyday duties would be that of what that salary is. Um, and so uh, I, don't, I don't think it's out of line for just basic maintenance at the airport. And uh, I was also told that there would be a new uh, effort to enforce a 45-minute pre-arrival, you know, pre-departure arrival time. Do you, do you know anything about that, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Brown? I do not. That would be that would uh, definitely have to be uh, the call by Boutique. Okay. Uh, Grant County would have nothing to do with that as far as how when you have to be here. I mean, I've seen people, you know, pull up within minutes and get on the plane. Which that frankly might be something I greatly. You know, appreciate <laughs> so, <laughs> that I that for. so so if you so, have to get there 45 minutes early that and again they, they've got to meet those regulations by the radiation and they might be telling both chief that you have to have something in place i i don't know that was that was my speculation as well i was okay. going to ask you okay do you uh, have any idea why they asked for the 45 minutes well that's my speculation they, they always ask them. your weight and stuff like that that's right but if you're a frequent flyer that ought to be on your yeah, I already know that. Yeah. Well, one of, one of the things also, Mr. Chairman, is the fact that is that for us when fueling, that also. So they, they've got to get people there uh, so that those times that we're talking about in those flights and those yeah. arrivals are on time so they know exactly how much fuel they're going to need um, so that we're ready to, to fuel them and they get off on time. I think that's basically why people want to get there early and the weights and all that's done because the pilot's got to figure all of that out. Any more less questions about fires. Uh, have we had any uh, complete report on the Spire fire that came up? I believe it's the Spire Ranch uh, that came up at uh, was it our very last meeting, Commissioner Billings? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Was sorry I think it, was the, uh, it was the special meeting with the Holloman folks. Uh, there was a fire, apparently, uh, for different acreages. Uh, have we seen a report on that? Yes, I, I, yes, I, I get the final report from Kip, Cliff Hila, who was actually the, the head agency on it. 
I believe it was 600 acres was the total. I'd be more than happy to give you, put a copy in your box and read the that. entire report, which shows what agencies were on the ground, um, how many acres it was, and the maps and all of that. So, Did you discuss the cause of the fire? No. Uh, the, as far as I know, the fire is still under investigation. Oh, okay. That's uh, what I, I was looking for. Right. No, the, as far as we know, that that is in state forestry's hands uh, that determine whether they want to do a full-blown investigation or not. Uh, again, my information, uh, I was on scene after it already had burned 200 acres or 300 acres, and so my job at that point was to try to get it out and protect some of the ranch homes that were over there. And so there was a lot of speculation, but I know that... On a wildland fire, my, my first priority is obviously to get resources there and help, and my next priority is to get the information to the county manager, which I feel is our, our PR uh, for anything of this, this nature. And so uh, my job is to try to get her that information so when you guys have questions, she's pretty up to date as quickly as I can. So the state forestry folks, have they told you whether they're going to <coughs> conduct a full investigation or not? They have not, and that, that is definitely not anything that I, I, I look at or, or, or go after. I just, I meet with them uh, on the phone and let them know that this is what it is. And the final report goes to them. So what they do with it after that point. And because it's on private property, that's another issue. Okay, thanks. Anything else? <coughs> you have anything else? You're done? Thanks, Randy. <laughs> okay, move to the sheriff. Nothing today? How about the clerk's office? Anything going on? Manager's office? Nothing going on over there, is there? No, I'm not, <laughs> not going to go into everything we're doing, but I just um, wanted you guys to take a look at, we put a draft calendar of uh, meeting dates for 2018 at your stations. If you can please take a look at that prior to the next meeting in January so we can approve those. Um, we went ahead and left it at the third Thursday of each month um, with the exception of March and we tried to dodge all of the spring breaks because they're all on different weeks pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so and of course January will be moved up to avoid the legislative session. But if you guys can take a look at that and make sure that you don't have any uh, and the clerk as well with the elections that we've not um, caused any issues so because we want to approve those in January. Um, I just wanted to add one thing to um, Mr. Carrillo's report in regards to detention policies. Um, those are actually on my desk and so I will get to those as soon as I can. Um, had some other deadlines and pretty large projects in front of that but he has completed those and they're um, on my desk for my review and, and possible revision. And then, as he stated, there's constantly revisions that come from NMAC and the accreditation um, accreditation board, so those are probably still subject to change. So we've just been extremely busy in our office. Any questions? I have none. Commissioners, anybody have anything today? Because I'm going to use my time and all yours on Thursday. <laughs> what? Uh, just to... You'll see. <laughs> no. Don't telegraph your punch. Okay. I, I do have one comment just uh, real briefly. Bernadette, thank you very much for everything you've been doing for us. We've had tons of meetings and you've kept us on track and I appreciate it. And that's all I've got to say for this meeting. Just want to give her a shout out and a thank you because she's, she's really been on top of, I've probably had 15 meetings this last, uh, this last uh, month and a half. So appreciate your help on that. She gets the big thumbs up emoji. <coughs> Except I didn't know who it was, who was emailing me because there's a last name change. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, who's this? <laughs> okay, I take a motion to adjourn. Well, does anybody have something else they want to say? So, All those in favor say, probably say aye. 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 Motion passes.